Hello everyone. Now today we are going to see the inversions of standard prime chain mechanism. So mechanism is, is nothing but is the combination of links in which any one link is fixed and the other links there will be having relative motion with respect to each other and the fixed link is also called as frame. For the given mechanism, by fixing the different links, you will be getting different mechanisms. So such phenomena is called as inversion of mechanism. And in this inversion of mechanism, we will be giving some input and we will be taking some output. So both of this input and output motion will be well known to us. So what is ladder crank chain mechanism? So in this, this ladder crank chain mechanism, it is basically consists of four links. So first link, it is the frame, which is also called as fixed link. Second link, it is the crank. Third link, it is the connecting rod. And fourth link, it is the piston with the guide case or cylinder. The cylinder is the fixed part. So piston and cylinder. So here, it consists of four links in which the kinetic pairs are three turning pairs and one sliding pair. So all these kinetic pairs, it comes under the category of lower pair as they are having surface or area content. So what are the inversions of ladder crank chain mechanism? So the first is IC engine, second is the rotary or gnome engine, third is with work quick leader mechanism, next fourth is crank and slotted lever mechanism, and last is hand pump. So we will see the first inversion that is IC engine mechanism. So this IC engine mechanism, it is itself the standard crank chain mechanism in which this second link will be the crank. This here, this link will be crank. This will be connecting rod and next will be piston and cylinder system. So here for this IC engine mechanism, the rotary motion of crank will be converted into reciprocating motion of the piston or vice versa, reciprocating to rotary motion. Then second inversion is the rotary or gnome engine. So here, if you see the second link, the link number two, it is the fixed link or frame, we can say. Then third link is the piston, first link is the cylinder, and fourth link is the connecting rod. So here, the cylinder will be rotating with respect to this axis. So this engine is called as rotary engine. As the cylinder it is rotating, this connecting rod it will be same, it will be having oscillating motion, and all these pistons will be having sliding motion with respect to cylinder. So, in this engine, as the cylinder it is rotating, so this engine is called as rotary or gnome engine. And this was developed by the scientist gnome, so this engine is also called as gnome engine. <coughs> Next, second inversion, again it is with work quick return mechanism. So in this with work quick return mechanism, this mechanism it is basically used in shaper machine. So for here, same, the fixed link, this link number two is fixed. Then third link is the crank, what is also called as driving crank, which is attached to slider four. And this slider four, it is consisted inside this slotted link number one. So here, the fixed link two it is obviously fixed. The third link that is the driving crank will be having rotary motion. And this, this fourth link slider, it will be sliding inside this slotted link number one. And this slotted link number one will be having only oscillating motion with respect to fixed link number two. And ahead of this slotted link one, we are attached the connecting rod to the ramp. And to this ramp, we have attached the cutting tool here. So what happens here, there are two angles, alpha and beta. So when the crank is moving from this position, suppose we say C R1 to C A2 position. So whatever the angle which has been traveled by this driving crank, it is nothing but this the alpha. So when this crank is at initial position here, so your ram or tool will be this is, as this is the line of stroke, it will be at this initial position, first part. Uh, for example, if you can see here, R1 position. Now this ram is in the mid position, but the, when you are this uh, 
what is a <clears throat> driving crank is at a1 position your this ram will be at r1 position first position and when it goes to the second position a2 when this driving crank goes to position a2 this ram it will go to r2 position extreme position so whatever the angle traveled by this driving crank is nothing but alpha so whatever the angle angular displacement which is taking place in this driving crank during this part this ram tool it is operating means it is doing the cutting operation so this stroke is called as cutting stroke and from the driving crank moves from a2 c a2 position again to c a1 position so this will be the ram will be moving again to its initial position so this stroke is called as riddle stroke so if you observe here whatever the angle travel during the cutting stroke is alpha and during the return stroke this beta so beta is less than the alpha so it concludes that time taken for cutting stroke is maximum as compared to return stroke so this mechanism is called as quick return mechanism and this mechanism was developed by the scientist withwork so this mechanism is called as withwork quick return mechanism okay now we will see its animation we have seen what a slider crank is it is essentially four links connected using three revolute pairs and a sliding or prismatic pair now we are going to change its fixed link so instead of fixing link 1 we'll be fixing link 2 like this in its essential form this inversion of slider crank looks like this link a b is fixed so this is link a b fixed and b c will be used as the input so this link b c will be used as the input and we'll be moving this uh, right now we are also seeing some traces of points we'll talk about that in a moment so this inversion can be made a little more useful by adding couple of extra links here they are so we are going to extend this link a c like this add one extra link for here and at the end of it we will attach a tool which is constrained to reciprocate along this line so as our input link b c rotates the tool reciprocates back and forth now let us see its extreme positions. So the tool is on in the rightmost extreme when our input link BC is over here. Then we will retract it back. So it will go towards its leftmost position over here when BC is in this position. And then again, it will move forward. So it retracts and moves forward but if you notice the angle through which our input link is turning when moving forward and when retracting the tool back these two angles are not equal and therefore the tool will take more time to go forward and in a lesser shorter time it will be retracted back such mechanism is called a quick return mechanism because it retracts back in a shorter period of time and this is just as well because when the tool is moving forward it is doing something useful while for get, while getting backward it is just going getting ready for the next stroke so we don't want to waste our time there so such mechanisms are commonly used in machine tools where tool does something useful in a cycle and then rest of the cycle is finished quickly where the tool is just brought back to the initial position this quick return characteristic of a mechanism can be quantified using a ratio called as a quick return ratio it is a ratio of angle 
turn by the crank during the forward stroke of the tool divided by the angle turned by the crank for the return stroke of the tool. And since the crank is usually connected to an electric motor, these angles directly translate into the time taken for forward and the return stroke. So the ratio of these two angles is the ratio of these two time slices within which the tool is moved forward and then brought back. So that is quick return ratio. The mechanism that we saw here is called the Whitworth quick return mechanism. And it is derived from the second inversion of slider crank. Okay, so this whole is about the Whitworth. Now, second is crank and stroke level mechanism. So this is the third inversion of slider crank mechanism in which this link number three will be fixed. Then link number two will be act as a crank which will have a rotary motion. Then this crank is attached to this slider which is uh, having link number one. And this slider is sliding in this slotted link number four. Okay, so here same the crank will be having rotary motion and this slotted bar will be having oscillating motion. To this slotted bar, this connecting rod and this ramp to which two is attached. So this is this line is called as line of stroke. So here, initially, when this uh, uh, your crank is at position C B2, when your crank is at position C B2, okay, or we can say when your crank is at position C B1, your this slotted link bar uh, four, link number four, it will be at position B1. And when it moves from position C B1 to C B2, so this slotted link bar four, link number four, it will move from point P1 to P2. So at this time, your this ramp, which is attached to this tool, it will again move from R1 to R2. So when it is moving in this zone, whatever the stroke traveled by this ramp, it is the cutting stroke. So during this stroke, the machining operation, it is taking place, or material removal, it is taking place. And when again your this crank is moving from position CB2 to CB1, and it is traveling an angle alpha, so this ramp, it will including or it is just doing the return stroke. So it will just come to its original position. So here, beta is nothing but the cutting stroke angle, and alpha is nothing but the return stroke angle. Okay, you will see its animation here now. If we start with a basic slider crank, which can be schematically represented like this. So it has a crank over here and on the other side it has a slider and if we fix link number three which is this coupler over here then we get the third inversion of slider crank like this. So here is its schematic representation. So on one side of this fixed link we have a fully rotating pin so on this side, we will get a crank. While on the other side, we have a partially rotating pin. So we will get a link which only oscillates. The resulting mechanism looks like this in its bare essential. So our input is this crank. So it rotates. At the end of that crank, there is a slider. As the slider moves along a circular path, it drags the guide with it. So this guide only oscillates back and forth. Next, we are going to make this mechanism a little more useful by adding a few links like this. So here we have added a link. At the end of it, we have fixed a tool, which is constrained to reciprocate along this horizontal path. Now, as the mechanism moves, the tool goes back and forth. So it reciprocates. And like inversion number two, 
we can get a quick return characteristic over here. The quick return ratio of this mechanism can be evaluated using the two extreme positions of the guide, which is usually a link with a slot in which the slider slides. And these two extreme positions are nothing but tangents to the circular path of the slider like this. So this is the path of the slider. And these are the two extreme positions of the slotted lever. And again, here we can see the angle turned by the crank during the forward stroke shown in green and the return stroke shown in red are unequal. Because this will be usually connected to an electric motor, these angles directly translate into time because electric motors rotate uniformly. And the ratio of these two angles, the forward and the return stroke angle, will give us the quick return ratio. Let us follow the links over here to see this mechanism in 3D and in action. Uh, there are two manifestations. First, we will see uh, the crank slotted lever quick return mechanism. So this is how it looks in 3D. So we have marked these angles. The green is the return stroke and red, which is a larger angle, is the forward stroke. Instead of using a lever with a, a slot, we have used a cylindrical lever. And instead of uh, the slider, we have a sleeve which slides on it. But essentially the mechanism or the characteristic of the mechanism remains the same. Let us now go to another manifestation. So we will follow the other link. And that takes us here. So over here we, are, we have what is called as a oscillating cylinder engine. So here we have the crank, fully rotating crank, that's our input. Attached to that is the piston. And the piston is moving back and forth in a cylinder, which is free to oscillate. This is used in foot pumps, as well as the oscillating cylinder engines. So these are some of the practical applications of slider cranks in version number three. Okay. So next version is your hand pump. So this we are well known that hand pump we are using in domestic applications. So here, what is the change? Here, if you see the cylinder, it is itself link number four is fixed. Link number two is the crank. Link number three is the connecting rod. And link number four will be the cylinder in which this piston is sliding or it is having a supporting motion. So here, rotary motion of crank will be given oscillating motion to this connecting rod. And this motion is given to the piston rod and piston where it will be having a supporting motion. So here, rotary motion of crank will be converted into a supporting motion of this piston present inside the cylinder. We will see its animation. we start with the basic slider crank mechanism where we have a fixed link and on one side it has a crank and on the other there is a slider and if we fix link number four which is nothing but this slider then we get inversion number four and this is how it looks in a schematic diagram so link number four here is fixed on one side, it has a partially rotating hinge. So it is going to have an oscillating link connected to it. And on the other side, it has a sliding pair, a prismatic pair. So it will have a slider that slides in it. So let us see how such mechanism would look in a little more detailed form. Revolute pair C over here is connected to a fixed link. So this is going to only partially rotate. 
So this link here, which is link number three, would only oscillate. Then we have this link over here, which is link number one, connected with a slider or sliding pair over here. And the two other links, B and A, B and A, are capable of full rotation. Let us see this in action. So we'll hold it here and drag on it. And indeed, we get A and B as fully rotating pins, while C gives only oscillatory motion. And this link slides back and forth in our fixed link. Finally, we will flesh it out even more. And this is how it would look then. So here we have a cylinder. In that cylinder, there is a piston. So this is connected to our sliding link over here. And on the body of this cylinder, we have mounted this link CB. And link AB and its extension becomes a handle with which it can be moved. And then we have this mechanism. This mechanism is used in hand pumps and that is one of the applications of inversion number four of slider crank mechanism. Thank you.